Hello and uh, welcome everyone to a tutorial about how to use Festivity the Blender Shader for Genshin of course. Now I have to outline two very important things. If you're new to Blender, then I suggest finding the tutorial to learn how to use Blender first because this tutorial will not go over the basics and is for already well-versed intermediate people who can use Blender. Second, there's two distinct versions of the shader. There is the Goo Engine version and there's the regular Blender version. Goo Engine is a build of Blender which specializes in creating 3D anime. It's made by Dilagon Studios, Dilon Goo Studios, apologies, and you have to pay at least £5 to download a copy of Goo Engine. So if you don't have money on you, then, then you'll have to use the regular Blender version. Now don't worry, there isn't a big difference. The only difference is a depth based rim light. So, yeah. Um, it says £5 a month, but you only have to pay one time to actually download Goo Engine. It's just £5 a month if you wish to support Dillon Goo Studios. So, because of that, I'm presuming most of you won't have Goo Engine, so I'm going to be using the regular Blender version. Now, the shader can work for version 3.3 and above, but I highly suggest you stay on version 3.3. Reason being is that recently the new Blender version 3.4 update introduced a change to the mix node. Now I don't know how well the compatibility is between version 3.3 and version 3.4, but I'd rather not take the risk. So I'd really suggest using Blender version 3.3. To change to Blender version 3.3, you, you right click on this if you're using Steam, and you then click on properties. You click on betas, and you select, uh, select this box here. You scroll down until you find version 3.3 stable LTS. That is going to download version 3.3 for you, and then you can carry on with the rest of the video. So let me open Blender. Okay, now we are in Blender. So, first things first is we have to download the actual shader, of course, and we have to download the setup wizard for the shader, which will make this whole process much easier. So, let's go over to the downloads. So this is the setup wizard for the festivity shader. All you have to do is scroll down and download the latest version. I'm going to be downloading version 1.141, but that's only because I tried using version 1.15 before and it for some reason didn't work for me. It should work for you, so don't worry about that. So you, can, so you download this, then you go over here to this link and scroll down un until the usage and click on source. That will download the actual shader for you in a zip file. Once you get that, you need to open File Explorer then you have to find where you downloaded the shaders and the setup with it. For the shaders, you simply right click and click extract here. You do not do that to the setup with it because that's an actual add-on, not, not, not a shader. So we open back to Blender and we click on edit, preferences, and then we click on install. You have to find the Genshin shader and the setup with it. You only want to select the setup with it and click install add-on then it'll automatically redirect you to it and you want to enable it. Now if you press N and you click on Genshin on the side, you can find this little window. The advanced setup is just what the basic setup does but in step so you can control more easily what the setup does. So don't worry about it, unless you're having errors you don't have to worry about this. And run entire script, just run the entire script but I find it easier to just go through the basic setup. Another key feature is that I suggest having better FBX installed. Again, that is paid for, so you're gonna have to pay for better FBX, but it's not a necessity, so don't worry about it. So, first we wanna click on setup character, and we want to find the character which we are going to import. So I'm going to use Kuching, because she's my favorite character, and we're going to select the .fbx file. Not the PNGs, those are the textures that we're going to be using for the materials. You select the FBX and click over here on the Genshin model folder button. As you can see, Kuching has now been put into Blender, imported, but she's laying down. All you have to do is select the armature in object mode, so make sure you're in object mode, and then click R, X, and type 90 on your number pad. Next, you want to click Setup Materials while having one of while having the model selected. So click Setup Materials. You find the shader that you downloaded just previously and you click on MiHoYo Dash Genshin Impact. Now, if you're using Goo Engine, you click MiHoYo Dash Genshin Impact Goo Engine. Do not do this if you're using regular Blender as this will glitch out your 
materials and it won't look good. So if we're using reg regular Blender, you click on Mihio dash Genshin Impact and you click on Genshin Import Materials. Next, if we go to Material Preview, you should see that your character now has materials. If 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 we go back to how it was before we imported the materials, it doesn't look right, does it? So next, we want to keep on having the character selected and click up and click on Setup Outlines. We want to go to the same shader folder again and click Mihoyo Dash Outlines and simply import that. Next, a new window will pop up. What you want to do is go to the description and download the data files for the Genshin characters. They're normally in .json form, and then you'll have lots of .json for all the characters in Genshin. Of course, you want to find the one for your character and select all of them that you have, and click the import button again. What this will do, it'll import outlines and also color the outlines correctly to how they are shown in game. As you can see here, if you check in game, that's exactly how Kuchin looks like. So now we're almost done, all we have to do is click finish setup. And now, you can see that the armature is selected. You want to select it again to make it yellow, not orange. Go to the object data properties, click on viewport display, display as stick, and click on in front to check it. So now it's much easier to see the bones. Now I would suggest making your own custom rig with shape rigs. I mean, not as in change the actual rig, but make a shape rig so it's easier to see where the bones are. Of course, that's up to you. You don't have to. It's just what I did, and I'm going to demonstrate that later. So now, you have finished and imported the character that you need within Blender. You can move within the render view, but I would not suggest that, as it is very laggy because of Eevee's horrible optimization. So if you want to animate, click the solid mode. And then you can animate that easily. As you can still see, there's still some FPS dropped. So what you want to do is select the model and disable the geometry nodes from viewport. Click this button and not the camera button because otherwise it won't show up within the render. So therefore you can see it's much smoother to move and whatever bone you select, it'll move as intended. Now there's much more you can do with the model after it's done for your own convenience, but this is the model as is and looks exactly like from Genshin Impact. Now that we're done with importing the actual model, I'm going to show you my finished product of Nahida that I modified quite a bit in Gu Engine. So let me get right, right there. So this is my Nahida that I finished quite a couple days ago. So let's go to rendered view. Here we go. The materials have been processed. And as you can see, there is a full-blown shape rig for my Nahida. Of course, all this is optional, you don't have to do this, but I find this the best if you want a long-term project without being annoyed by the, by the amount of bones. The, the characters do also have shape keys which control their faces. I've connected my Nahida to this panel which, which controls her mouth and all those do that. Of course, the lighting is here. If we move it here, you can see that the light is now coming from back and her face is in shadow. And that's about it. That's about the basics of Festivity Shader. If you have any problems or you're confused, then I suggest joining Festivity's Discord, which I'm going to leave a link in the description. So yeah, I hope you have a wonderful time making Blender animations. And I'll go now. Bye-bye.